that the definition of the cross product looks really weird. Why do we do it in this way? Well, you will see that the cross product has some really nice and useful properties due to this choice. And in this video, you will see three of those properties. Let us look at an example to show the properties. If you have a, f a factor u uh, 101 and a factor v 110, and we can compute the cross product, you know how to do that, u cross v equals minus 111. And we will illustrate now a few of the properties of the cross product using this example. So, uh, for example, if we have computed u cross v, we can after take the inner product with the factor u. So we compute u inner product u cross v. So our u was 101 and our u cross v equals minus 111. Then the inner product becomes minus 1 plus 0 plus 1 equals 0. And if we do the same with v inner product u cross v, here we have our v, then we get minus 1 plus 1 plus 0. Uh, 0 is again 0. So we see that in this case u is orthogonal to u cross v and v is also orthogonal to u cross v. Well, you can prove this property in general by writing down u equals u1, u2, u3, v equals v1, v2, v3. Write down what the cross product is and then take in general the inner products and then you see that this property holds for all vectors u and v. So always have that uh, u and v are both orthogonal to their cross product. That's the first useful property. We illustrate the second one. Uh, <coughs> first of all, we have our u and v, and we can compute the theta, the angle between u and v, using the inner product, because we know that the cosine of theta equals u inner product v divided by the length. Well, computing the inner product between u and v we get 1 plus 0 plus 0 equals 1, and both the lengths of u and v are square root of 2. So the cosine of theta equals 1 half, so we find theta equals pi over 3 in this case. Now we can also compute the following property. We can compute the length of the cross product and then divide by the length of u and v again. Well, the length of the cross product equals 1 plus 1 plus 1, and then the square root, so the square root of 3. Uh, divide by the length, so we get one half square root of three, and you see that that happens to be exactly the sine of theta. So you see in this case, uh, uh, the length of the cross product equals length u times length v times the sine of theta. And again, you can prove that this is true in general. And for this, you uh, uh, can uh, use again u equals u one, u two, u three v equals v1, v2, v3, and uh, in this, uh, this proof you also uh, use the uh, uh, inner product. So this is quite a lengthy proof, but you can do it. So this example only illustrates this fact. And do those two properties fix your cross product? Well, let's see. We know that your cross product has to be orthogonal to u and v, so if you have a u and v, your uh, cross product has to be orthogonal to that. And we know its length. Uh, it's given in terms of u and v in the sine of the angle. But then still your cross product could be either over here or over there. So we, those first two properties almost uh, fix your cross product, but you need a third one. Is the cross product up or down? And that is fixed by the right hand rule. How does that work? If you have your u in the direction towards you and your v in this direction over here, then your u cross v goes up. It's called the right hand rule, and it's illustrated in the picture uh, in the with the coordinate axis. Where the e1 is going towards u, the uh, e2 is going to the right, and then your cross product has to go up. So for that you so to determine the orientation, you have to use the right hand rule. So those three properties fully specify your cross product.